Welcome back. Glad you could join me again. Let me explain. Men express themselves emotionally through sex with their significant other. We express ourselves through talking with our significant other. That's why they complain we talk too much and we complain that they want it too much. And I hope you're focused and on your square. So women say we as men want it too much. And we as men say women complain, nag, and just talk too much in general. Yeah. So the point of this somewhat random one today is, be his muse. She makes you want to be a better man. But do modern women want to be better? For you, for us, for men in general? Think about it for a second. For many modern Western women, being better women for men is not really the goal, is it? It's not really the thing. They'd probably call you a pick me in that case. But being better women for themselves, of course, yes, of course, it makes sense. Being selfish, it's all about me sort of attitude, okay, all right. Now we will get to the video in a moment, Miss Olivia Alexa's video. Her video is titled, How to Keep Men Happy, Six Easy Steps. Ah. Now the interesting thing is, I could not find a video based around this topic specifically. A woman saying how to be his muse. Now, of course, you can find videos saying how to be his inspiration, how to inspire a man. Disgusting. But none really focused on the muse aspect. And obviously, yes, I want to explain some interesting things in this as well. Obviously, yes, there's a sexual element in it as well. Throughout history, many muses that men have had, obviously, they've probably slept with them as well, more than likely. <laughs> not in every case, but in some. And I have a few interesting cases I want to show you today. First, the word. Muse. Damn, that's epic for no reason. Muse. Okay. As a verb, to muse is to consider something thoughtfully. As a noun, it means a person, especially a woman, who is a source of artistic inspiration. Interesting. So obviously as a verb, you know, to muse about something is to consider or think about something or, or ruminate. Yeah, ponder. Yeah, you can use it in that aspect to muse about something. So if someone says to you, oh, you're thinking about something, you look like you're in deep thought, you say, no, ha, me a peasant, please. I'm musing, far more sophisticated than just a mere thought, please. Come on. Yeah, you don't have to be that extravagant, but you can show off. But the main part, obviously, is a woman that's inspiring <laughs> and uplifting. <laughs> yeah. And can or should you try to make this your woman? A muse. In mythology, the muses were nine goddesses who symbolized the arts and sciences. Today, a muse is a person who serves as an artistic inspiration. Often filmmakers talk about a certain actor being a muse, meaning the actor inspired a movie. Writers, painters, musicians, and other artists have muses. Muse can also refer to thinking deeply. If you muse about something, you're giving it serious thought. You can't muse in five seconds. No, please. Peasants. <laughs> Seriously. People muse on certain ideas for years. For years. And think of all the artists, musicians and whatnot that have had muses and use muses to obviously make their work better. Then some can ask a question, but are these men just using these women up? Just using these women up for their source of influence and inspiration and then leaving these women as husks empty husks of women <laughs> it's not funny but it's true i'm gonna share some points with you in a moment we're talking of muse the band muse one of my favorite songs the knights of sidonia that song is a i'm going to break something sort of song like yeah i'm going on a mission to break something or just yeah, I'm going to F something up. I'm going to proper F something up sort of song. Well, it's probably just me, but yeah, it's a very, it's a very energetic song by Muse. And going from Muse to another artist, New York rapper Nas, who has a very interesting line. In his song, We Will Survive, from the I Am album, the song being a sort of dedication sort of story about his relationship with Tupac and Biggie and other artists. But at the start, he says, to quote, we used to R&B bitches to see who was sickest. Now, as a young man, I think I was about 18, that blew my mind. Like, wow, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Muse. Are you telling me that as a rapper, if you sleep with chicks that are R&B singers or that can sing, it will make your skills as a rapper better? 
What? Obviously, I was a young man. That blew my mind. Wow, really? Whoa. Hey, should I try it? Would it really work? Now, obviously, you can say that's very quite you know rude saying oh by sleeping with certain women it can make your artistic skills better give her the day but then again it does lead to the point of a muse does it not doesn't it have a look at this from salon.com so i think it's probably a woman's website oh god and i think this is a sort of dear jane letter one written by a man by carrie tennis must i choose my wife or my muse interesting I rely on other women to fuel my creative growth. How do I resolve this with my marriage? Hi, Carrie. I seem to have this pattern where I am able to perform at a high level and with confidence. Interesting point. Only when I am driven to prove myself to women. Damn. Part alone itself is powerful. Speaks many words, doesn't it? We can talk about the great things men have built. At the same time, yeah, how many men were inspired by the women they had in their lives to build such wonders i'm just saying so even if women aren't direct muses in some cases some women some if they're decent women that actually care for you you hope they can actually inspire you to want to be a better man and in some way prove yourself as a man to women which is something men do all the time it's bullshit part of a man thing as well as a mating thing as well to kind of show off to chicks so yeah but carrying on these imaginary relationships are powerful, poetic and beautiful things, and the passion for them spills over into my work, my spiritual practice, and my general sense of well-being. When I cannot maintain them vividly in mind, I become quite tentative, unconfident, self-disparaging, and scattered. Interesting. This man has a wife, yet even with a wife, he still needs the energetic, artistic energy, if you will, from these other women. Now, in this case, he's not banging them, he's not sleeping with them, but just their presence, the thoughts of them is enough to drive him and make him thus so creative. But this one's weird because these women have no idea that they're muses. But I'm using this one to paint a picture of the obvious thing of just how some men would just, of just how far some men would go just to be inspired by women. And because just a lot, just a lot of men are. I must add that these women are real women, friends in most cases, whom I cannot approach because of distance or mainly because I'm married. So these women could be through the internet. So it's, it's one of those sort of things as well. The obvious problem with this pattern, which is a deeply embedded part of my creative self, is that it's playing havoc with my long-term marriage. And this destabilized relationship is not good for either of us or our children. So he's got children as well. Wow. That's, well, that's not good. A quick question. Is this a form of cheating? Is it? And if women would say this is a form of cheating, the question and title permits, can you be his muse? Do you understand how to and why you can or should be his muse? Though I don't really think your girlfriend or your wife should be your muse. I'm just saying, but do women understand that? Considering there's no videos on it, I doubt they do. My wife and I met physically after a long period of correspondence where she was then the object of my projection. Oh God. Yeah, he was lost. We married quickly after meeting. The immediate problem in our marriage from the very beginning was that most of our infatuation was, was based on projection. While we share some solid basic values, my wife took it as her mission to bring me down to earth, to make me socially normal, interesting. While I saw my mission as liberating her from conventional fixations with the hopes that we might conspire together on a greater social mission. Seriously, that's trash. Okay. So at one point when they first met, she was his muse, but then it faded. Interesting. In the end, I flew off in my mind while she stayed stubbornly rooted, becoming increasingly disappointed in me the more I disappeared. Wow. So in some way, this guy was falling deep into himself creatively to kind of avoid his woman as well and find his creative musings. <laughs> wow, that's, that's sad. A brief side note. Some of my celebrity muses, two lovely women, Miss Sade, and Miss Kate Bush. Oh my God. Oh my God. But it's not just a physical thing. It's the creativity as well. For how creative these women are and how much they evoke a certain level of creativity. Obvious Sade classics. 
cherish the day. No ordinary love, obviously. And smooth operator, to just name a few, among the many she has. And of course, you know, smooth operator, of course, you know. <laughs> just like me, yeah? Bullshit. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, okay. And then Kate Bush. She's crazy. Who some would think is crazy. No, this woman is amazing. From, again, obvious classics, running up that hill, cloud busting, and one of my personal favourites, between a man and a woman. But with all the talk of us as men being infatuated with women in terms of creativity and how, yes, it's about sex again because as men we've got to always think with our knobs. What is more than just the sexual thing, it's also the inspirational thing. It's probably more the inspiration than the sexual thing as well. It's just as men, you know, some men will just try to sleep with anything. But it is more the creative energy the inspiration, how there's something special about her that many women don't have. Have a look at this. Okay, this is from an American tale, Fireball Goes West. It's an interesting part of the movie. Yes, it's obviously a kid's movie. But this part here, even from a kid, because they played this endlessly, endlessly on British TV. But this part here caught my attention as a child. Because this cat, he's the villain, the bad guy. His main mission was to trap the entire town of mice in a big, giant mouse trap, basically. And there were just food for him and his cat buddies. Just a big, giant mouse buffet. Now, none of the mice stood out. There were just food, except for this moment here, where he found a muse and it messed him up. But look at how lost he is. Look at his face. There is a star waiting to guide Make note of the look in his face. I'm going to show you again with another famous artist shortly. He's supposed to be a bad guy. Turned into a big pussy. And we'll leave it there. To him, she becomes the diva. His inspiration, so much so that at the end she thwarts his plan to eat all the other mice by, you know, standing on the trap and he's like, no, no, the diva. And then, you know, he messes up his own plan. But to go from that look on the cat's face, look at him whimpering, bad man cat, please, whimpering over a little mouse. But remember that look, that lost, dreamy eyed, lost look. Remember it. And here is that look again by world-famous artist Andy Warhol. And who is he admiring? Oh, his most famous muse, Eddie Sedgwick, if I've said that correctly. But look at the way he's beaming at, look at that, look at that. He's lost, he's, yo, he's lost. Socialite and original, poor little rich girl, Eddie Sedgwick had an undeniably codependent relationship with pop icon Andy Warhol. One that's been the subject of several books and movies. My God, re really? Wow. But obviously that's what she was there for, to inspire creative work, which brought fame and popularity and more women, probably drugs as well. Most notably, the 2006 film Factory Girl. I think I've heard of it, never seen it. Sedgwick was a fixture around Warhol's iconic factory and the stars in two screen tests and several films, including Beauty No. 2, Chow Manhattan, and of course, Poor Little Rich Girl. Warhol also painted Sedgwick multiple times. Probably not the only thing he did multiple times. Sedgwick's pedigree and iconic sense of style, which included a cropped haircut, somewhat feministy, dangling earrings, fur coats, and occasionally no pants. In the UK, pants can mean underwear, so she was probably walking around in a fur coat and no drawers. Okay, okay, okay. And no pants enthralled the rather shy pop artist. Sedgwick is also said to have been the inspiration for the Bob Dylan songs Like a Rolling Stone, Just Like a Woman. Yeah, just like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And leopard skin pillbox hat. Interesting. But again, how lost he was to her. But do modern women understand this? Not just the blind lustful stare. It's not just about the lust. It's how much a woman just being a certain way. Understanding how to be a feminine woman. The power of it, the natural power. How for certain men it breeds inspiration and creativity. On another level, do modern women understand it or they just have no need to, they don't care? Yeah. 
Frida Kalho has a famous quote saying, I am my own muse. I am the subject I know best. The subject I want to better. Which makes sense. Why would it not be one's life goal to better oneself or yourself? Just better yourself, you know what I'm saying? Why would it not be your life goal to better yourself? I know that's not a man, that's her. You know, she was very proud of her mustache. You know, very proud woman. Very popular and amazing Mexican artist. I think there was a movie about her. I think Salma Hayek played her with the uni brow and the mustache. Yeah. Blah. So let's jump to the very dark, very, very dark tale. This is actually kind of sad. It's actually, damn, it's very sad. And it does talk about a woman who may fade over time. Shong Yu, the story of muse Elizabeth Sedal and artist Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Sedal met Rossetti in 1850 and became his lover almost immediately. Damn, she was fast. Oh. As the affair ripened, she became increasingly insecure about Rossetti's notorious womanizing. <laughs> it's, not, it's not surprising to find a few artists that are womanizers. Agonizing over what he'd do with her when her beauty faded. Wow, when she hit the wall. So even back then, in 1850, obviously women were very aware that, oh, a man may, you know, move on. A man may move on once she, you know, she hits the wall. Wow, that's... <laughs> oh, men are awful. <laughs> All right, let's, let's carry on. In short, pitiless verses, she described herself through the lens of her husband's glib aestheticism. Damn. Lo, I sit down at my lady's feet, gazing through her wild eyes, smiling to think how my love will fleet when their star-like beauty dies. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. There's a glimmer, a shine, a glow in my woman's eyes, but you know, eventually she's going to get old and that light's going to disappear and yeah, the beauty's going to die. Yeah, I don't love you anymore, woman. You don't look good enough. Whoa. <laughs> this is really not funny. It's really not funny, but it's... Wow. Wow. After years of being treated like a muse by friends, mentors and lovers, obviously, she began to think of herself in the same tired terms. Beautiful, fragile, disposable. Wow. Whoa. It's somewhat heavy, isn't it? For a woman to feel as if she's been seen in such a grand light and then to just be discarded, to feel disposable. No one cares. Is that the downside of women being amused to a man, though? But it does get sadder for Miss Sadal. Sadal lost her confidence. She lost weight. She lost a child. Damn. She even lost. She took an L, literally, at her husband's bizarre request. One of the L's in her surname... <laughs> <laughs> whoa whoa well he took the l but you know what i mean she still took an l she lost an l damn whoa <laughs> in 1862 a few months after suffering a miscarriage she drank too much laudanum and lost at the age of only 32 her life sadal may have intended to kill herself legend has it rosetti burned her suicide note to avoid a scandal or she may have made a fatal mistake while trying to numb the ache of depression. Wow. So in some cases, can you blame women for not wanting to be any sort of muse or inspiration for a man? Is that why feminism tells women not to be, you know, not to be anything a man needs or wants? You're an independent woman. Be nothing for a man, but be everything for yourself. Be the muse for yourself. Like mustachioed Frida. Hi guys. So I have so many requests in my back inbox asking me to do a part two to the video I did about five reasons why you possibly can't find a good man. Um, basically talking about how when you do find a good man and you get married and all that good stuff, how to make him happy, so to speak. Number one is don't nag him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. If men do get creative inspiration from women, how could he get that from a nagging woman? Number two is don't deny sex. Let me explain. You don't need to explain, Olivia. You know, only if a man's doing something wrong, he should be denied sex. Only if he's doing something wrong. Not because a woman wants to use it as like a power leverage thing. No, that's when he's effed up. Men express themselves emotionally through sex with their significant other. We 
express ourselves through talking with our significant other. That's why they complain we talk too much and we complain that they want it too much. It's 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 an exchange of power and weaknesses. Now, am I saying uh, every single time you're not in the mood to just go ahead and have sex anyway? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is it just keep in mind that when you when you don't, you could possibly be turning down and denying his expression of love. Number three is cater to him as king. You'd hope. But a lot of women nowadays see you as their court jester, you know, not not necessarily their king. She more wants to be the queen. And in some cases, some cases, she wants you to be the manservant. Oh, God. Number four is what you did to get him, do to keep him. It's like the article with the husband. How at first she was amused to him, but then the light faded from her eyes and the love for her died. <laughs> we, we as women, we complain a lot about how when men get comfortable, they don't do what they used to do and they start slacking off and all that but we do the same thing number five is be compassionate we're so used to him being the rock and the protector that we forget that he we actually forget how easily he could break down because of these very reasons exactly women don't understand how difficult it is being a man of course it's amazing and awesome you know of course <laughs> however it can be difficult being a man as well you see what women don't understand is why is why certain men seek out the presence or company of other women. The reason is because these women provide something soothing. For certain men, creative men, the soothing becomes inspiration, motivation. And the last and final one, which is the biggest one, is pray for and pray with your man. Pray for your man. If you, if you really think that you're about to master your relationship without consulting the master, then your relationship is headed nowhere fast. Silence, you fool! It's an art form in itself that I think a lot of modern women don't understand. How the biggest way to have power over a man is to be a feminine woman that he can aspire and want to aspire to be a man for. A better man for. But then again, if there aren't any better women for you to be a better man for, some men would say, what's the point? Here, here, woof, woof, as men, yeah. In other words... Focus. Observe. Remember. The world is yours. Have a nice day.